Friday Night Multimedia podcast coming to you from the Super Syntex Studio in downtown Waco off Franklin Avenue. I'm Chad Conine along with Trip Sports Editor Bryce Cherry. How you doing today, Bryce? Doing good, Chad. How about you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Um, ready for another week of high school football? Absolutely. And, you know, we do the Twitter check many times a day, and you just kind of brace yourself for more postponements and cancellations and district refiguring. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the middle of October. It's October 14th as we sit here today at 2, 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> if you're in 1A through 4A, it's, it's week 8 of the season. <clears throat> if you're in 5A or 6A, excuse me, folks, uh, you're in week 4-ish mm -hmm. of the season. Um, so, and last week we changed the game I was going to cover twice between the time that we sat here and did this and I think Thursday at sundown. Mm -hmm. And it's been weird, and I think I think even, you know, when our producer uh, was predicting that we would have a season, but there would be interruptions, and that's exactly what happened, and that was an astute prediction. But, you know, as we sit here right now, is the glass half empty or half full as it applies to the high school football season and the way it's going? I think it's all about how you view the world. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and for me, I tend to be more of a glass half full kind of guy. Uh, so I would say it's it's half full, and in talking with coaches, I would say that's the general consensus. Now, to say that they have faced frustration and consternation would be an understatement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <clears throat> one of the, the things that we've talked about frequently on the podcast here is just the um, the contact tracing and the quarantine that, that those kids have to go out just for potentially being in close contact with someone who had COVID. Right. And that 14-day window then that they have to quarantine, even though they might test negative during that span and not show any symptoms. And obviously, the, you know, we know that COVID can be asymptomatic and all that. But um, so... The fact that we are still playing games, um, I, I think we all knew that there would be interruptions and there would be cancellations, and, and, and so we do have to brace ourselves for that every week, and, and we've had some, some good weeks in that regard where we haven't had that many, and then we've had other weeks where, you know, it felt like we had a lot of them, um, but we're still playing, and, you know, we're still playing district games and eventually hopefully playoff games and to me that's a good thing yeah you know um i i think that i'm probably a cynic mm -hmm. but i'm also an optimist okay which is it's possible to be those two things uh, it's that's a paradox but go on it is and it isn't okay <laughs> but I know you enough to know that I feel like that's accurate but okay but so go on. but what's the motto what's the official motto of 2020 uh, I believe we were going with um, something is better than nothing. Yeah, or just it's better than nothing. Right. And it, it, the high school football season has been a lot better than nothing. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I've sat in the stands to cover a lot of games, and it's it's not my favorite thing, mm -hmm. but it has its charming moments. <laughs> now, it has other times when fans don't understand why I'm there, and right. I don't understand that I'm trying to work. Yeah. You know, and that's frustrating. Tricky. Tricky to but say I, the least. But I haven't I haven't mouthed off at any fans. And, <laughs> that's good. And yeah. you know that I have a history of mouthing off. Yeah, you've you've been known to do that. Yeah. yeah. As have I. <laughs> right, yeah. Let so, he who is uh, without sin cast the first stone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um so yeah, I mean I think it's it's more than half full. I mean if you look at the number of games that happen throughout the state on a Friday night, and the number of cancellations, it's a fraction. It's mm -hmm. maybe 5 to 10% probably. Well, and I think uh, the, both the UIL and various district executive committees were astute in creating a little wiggle room in this year's schedule. And, you know, I mean, we've, we're going to have in a couple of weeks, or I guess a week from Monday, we'll have a Monday, Monday night, night football, football yeah. game that will be a varsity high school football game on a Monday night. That'll be fun. Mark Wortham, I believe, is that game. Mm -hmm. 
and then Mark will turn around, uh, you know, on Saturday of that week and play Bremond. You can't play, you know, uh, two games in a five-day span. You can't yeah. go Monday, Friday. But, but you, you can apparently have a rotating five-day schedule. Right. You can you can play Monday and then uh, you know and then have what five days off in between. Right. And then turn around and play again. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. that's that's what Mark will do that week. And, you know, uh, no offense to Wortham, but Mark probably won't break a sweat in that game. You know, I mean, look, we're, we're talking about Martin Wortham. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, if there's some Wortham podcast listeners out there, I mean, it's it's no insult to you. I could say that just about well, any the Wortham, team. In, the in Wortham their, Bulldogs just, aren't alone in 2A Division Two and being ill-equipped to compete with the Mark Panthers. Absolutely. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, Mark, to me, is the prohibitive state champion favorite. Again. Right, right. Um, well, uh, let's, uh, let's move on from the half-empty, half-full idea and, and talk a little bit about one indication that it is half-full is that we've had some consistency in our pound-for-pound pound rankings. We haven't had to toss anybody out because their season's over or they've had some wacky, weird result. I mean... Uh, and yet I'm tossing somebody out. Okay, week. all right. Well, then, then let's have at it. So, yes, they have been fairly consistent, particularly at the top. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that they've changed all year and won two. That probably would have been one two in 2019 as well. Yeah, I would say that. And we already talked about the Mar Panthers. Mm -hmm. uh, they're number one for a reason, number one with a bullet, because they got a lot of guys that can run like a bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, La Vega's right there at 1A or 2, whatever you mm -hmm. want to say. But then... It shuffles a little bit. For a number of weeks now, I've had uh, the Jonesboro Eagles sitting at number three. And I maybe I got a little exposed on this. Uh, I, I was sort of calling out the Texas football rankings for, mm -hmm. for having Jonesboro maybe too low. Well, Jonesboro played that two-loss Borden County last week, and Borden County handled them just fine. <laughs> uh, so Jonesboro's fallen out of the top ten, and I'm dropping them out of my top five. That is not to say that I don't think Jonesboro can still do a lot of damage in the six-man 1A Division One playoffs. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. they can, absolutely. But with that loss, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump them out. I'm putting China Spring up another notch at three. Right. Right. Crawford at four, and then my new team that has entered the rankings for the first time uh, this year at number five uh, is another six-man team. And I've I was going to say, I was going to predict the yeah, Abbott Panthers. The Abbott Panthers, uh, who remain undefeated, and you know, you know, you asked the question earlier this year on the podcast, you know, about the possibility of a, a Jonesboro Abbott clash down the road in the playoffs. I think that would be incredible and fun, and certainly a game we would want to cover. Um, but yeah, Abbott's looking great, and um, Caden Johnson is just incredible. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. 1,800 yards now on the season, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, probably has a good chance at 2,500, you know, if not more. Well, yeah, I'd say so. It's like last year when, when uh, Zach Robachek said he was going to rush for 3,000 mm -hmm. yards, and I was like. Yeah, right, kid. Yeah. We need rushes for 2,700 or something or 2,400. Well, and here's the thing. You know, if you get to 3,000 in a six-man uh, season, you're doing it on an 80-yard field. I know, I know. So, and that's, yeah. you know, I mean, that, maybe is that even more impressive? I don't know. Well, I mean, in like, uh, you know, back to Grabaccio, but he had 376 yards against McGregor the other night, or 367, anyway. Uh but they have, you know, they were going 50 yards and, and you know, 58 yards for a touchdown some of the time. Mm -hmm. and, and so you had that shorter field. I mean, and the way he breaks out, I mean, really, when he gets in the secondary, he's a problem. Yeah, yeah, he is so fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, so on that subject, sort of, uh, and like I said, last week we sat here at 2 p.m. on Friday and mm -hmm. I'm at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, and my my – Schedule changed twice. I was going to go to Mark Bremont, yeah. and I was going to go to Conley Select. So basically, we're risking everything by even bringing up this week's schedule. I mean, I'm going to tread carefully. If all goes well the rest of the week, okay. you know, I'm tread not going to try to, try to I'm, it's a bad time to be presumptuous. Oh, yes. Right? Um, but we got a great lineup mm -hmm. if all goes well. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to go down to Salado, or that's the plan is for me to go down to Salado, cover number six, China Spring, versus number 10, Salado. Yeah, Salado broke into the top, top 10, 10 in the state this week rankings. with that win over Conley. And what an impressive win on the road. Uh, you know, John Werner talked about it with me. You know, Salado kind of a grinded out slot T team, and, and it gave Conley problems. Yeah, and, and this, I got to think this is for that district championship. Yeah. Yeah, I would think this is the de facto district right, championship right. game. And then number two, Grandview at West. That's a great game. It is. Art Strickland will be there mm -hmm. according to our current Wednesday afternoon <laughs> plan. Right. <laughs> yes, that is the plan. Uh, and, of course, we'll be featuring West on Friday. Yeah. They're West playing yeah. like a vintage West Trojan football team. Absolutely. Yeah, they're playing great. Um you know, in talking with David Woodard uh, this this year, I mean, he's he's excited about the way the defense is playing. I think that has been a, a vast improvement, maybe from from last year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they're they're just running the ball and and pounding teams with the run. So you run the ball, play defense, you do that, you keep yourself in games, and you win a lot of games. I think he still wants to see that downfield passing game click a little bit more, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, West is playing great. And if you'll recall, last year, Grandview lost one game all year. They went 15 and one, won the, the Zebras won the state mm -hmm, championship. Mm -hmm. um, the Whitney Wildcats the, got them. Whitney Wildcats got them. So could the West Trojans be this year's Whitney Wildcats? I think, you know, it's certainly within the realm of possibility. Now, when it comes to West, when, you, when they're playing good, is there any other team in the area that would fit the description of, like, a blue-collar, tough football team more so than West? Uh, you know, I, I think Crawford is, is certainly kind of that in same. that realm. Yeah, um, yeah it's tough to that, – that's that's a good question. But uh, West, Crawford, I think, you know, as even as dynamic as Mart is, I think they're a, they're a tough, right. hard-nosed team. Yeah, you well, but, but, but Mart's going to beat you with – 60, 80 yard plays. Well, you know? okay, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. So more of a a grinded out kind yeah, of team. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, maybe West and Crawford are the ones that sort of come sure, to sure. Yeah, and, and yeah, I, I see that. Okay. Um, another one, uh, McGregor at Lorena. I'd love to cover any of these three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't love to cover Troy at Cameron Yo either. I mean, yeah, but but but. And that one could be for a district championship, too. The thing about that, Troy, uh, Cameron Yo, Lorena, McGregor, Rockdale, I'm just going to name the whole district while I'm at it. <laughs> but the thing about that district is it's so tied up in knots right now. And I think all the teams are really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, I, yeah, I named both of them. Um, if you had your pick, though, I, I forgot I had a question here. I thought yeah. I was just listing good games. Well, that's okay. <laughs> if you had your pick. Which one would you uh, cover and why? So I'm, I'm uh, couching this a little bit. My, my caveat is uh, assuming that this is a perfect world and there's no deadline. I'm, right. I'm picking McGregor and Lorena mm -hmm. because uh, we know how that worked out for you last week with McGregor and, uh, and uh, right, Troy. Right, right. 58 to 57. 58 to 57. You just talked about how – so I, I saw a note about the Big 12 this week. This is going to go a little off topic, but I'm going to bring it back. Okay. Uh, and it was something like 63% of the Big 12 games this year have been decided by a touchdown or less. I would dare say, without looking and having done this research, that the, the games in that district, the McGregor, Rockdale, Cameron, Troy, mm -hmm. Lorena district, uh, probably 80%. By the way, we're leaving that Academy and Caldwell. Academy and Caldwell. <laughs> Those are the other two. I, and I couldn't remember, what's, what district number is that? 11-3-A-D-1. Uh, okay. There you go. That's what I scrambled to look it up on Friday night about 10-42. There you go. Mm -hmm. Uh I'm saying, you know, 80% or more are coming down to a, a touchdown or less, or at least it feels like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so those games are competitive. 
all the teams. I don't think there's that much separation from one team to the next, and I feel like they're all pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, even the ones we didn't, we couldn't remember, Academy and Caldwell, I feel like are, are you right. know, pretty decent. Well, Caldwell, like Lorena, came down from 4A. Right. Yeah. And uh, Academy has been, uh, you know, just when you think you have a team down in the in this district, mm-hmm. they, you know, they score two or three touchdowns, they get back in the game. So that McGregor-Lorena game should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, DeAndre McDaniel's playing great for McGregor, uh, you know, and they're just, I feel like they're starting to come into their own, figure out maybe their identity. And then Lorena, you know, we know what they've done in recent years in Class 4A, and I think Coach Biles took the right attitude in dropping down to 3A and, and, and said, look, we're not going to just fall into wins, especially this district we're going into. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got to keep working. we got to keep, you know, doing what we do, and, and they have. Yeah, this is the point of the season where uh, in, in Lorena's, the district they were in with Conley and Robinson and them. I, I remember a few years ago, you look at Lorena and you're like, well, there's Lorena, they're going to finish, you know, they might get a fourth place playoff spot, or, you know, they're probably out of the playoffs. And then Boom, boom, boom! You win your last three games mm-hmm. of the season, and you're in like second or third place. Yeah, and that I, that feels like something Lorena has done. I, like I feel months. like, as well as anybody in the area, uh, Lorena maximizes its talent. And, and and you do that by getting better every week. Getting better every week. I think you have to be well coached. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Ray Biles, you know, he's been at it a while. He knows what he's doing. Right. Right. Uh, so speaking of covering games, Bryce, you have a new nickname, Five okay. Setter. Five Setter. I like it. I, I can live with Five Setter. Every vol- every volleyball match Bryce has covered uh, this this fall has uh, gone five sets. Not everyone. Uh, and typically, and- the ones that don't are when I uh, manage to make it out to Crawford. Uh, Crawford oh, seems yeah. to take care of business. You're but- going to start covering Crawford just so you yeah, just so I can get an early game 10, in. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I've had a lot of five setters. Uh, that threw you a curveball on Tuesday night, mm-hmm. and so describe how you handled it, and, and was that the strangest way you've ever filed a story before? So we're, we're getting a little bit into uh, how the sausage is made here on the podcast, and uh, you know, if the readers enjoy this, right. we'll, maybe we'll have a whole new podcast, you know, uh, behind the scenes. And the once people uh, see how the sausage is made, everybody wants to make sausage because it's so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be that's, not so glamorous. That's I, a Dwight Schrute line. I, I have, uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was, well, I knew I'd heard that. <laughs> uh, I have had people, you know, come up to me before, oh, you're, you know, you occasionally get this. Uh, oh, you have such a cool job, you know. Uh, can I come hold your notebook at a game, you know, especially when you're going to, like, something really oh, cool. Oh, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is where it's not so glamorous. So, yes, I covered Robinson China Spring Volleyball last night, Tuesday night. Five-set game. That Which started, started how late? Started at like an hour and 20 minutes late. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did not take my computer with me, which uh, in, in hindsight, in retrospect, it was a, was a mistake on my part. But I was... Um, let's, I'm just going to put it out there. I was expecting a sweep. <laughs> China Spring is undefeated on the year, third ranked. I had seen Robinson play this year, and I just didn't expect Robinson to give them the effort that that uh, that I saw. And kudos to Robinson; they mm-hmm. played an incredible match. Mm-hmm. But but it certainly was hampered by the fact that it started late. I was on my way to the match, by the way, and Rod texts me. Rod ate a lot our our uh, intrepid photographer and photo excellent chief. texter. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> this one actually made sense, and it said, uh, JV game just started. And I'm on my way there. This is probably 10, 15 minutes before the varsity game is supposed to start. Mm-hmm. And I just texted him back, crap. <laughs> <laughs> and so then he's, you know, seeing if I want to do an alternate game instead. And I said, no, let's let's stick with this. And um all that to say, to, to try to shorten this story up, yes, so I, te- I, uh, I s- did my story on my phone last night, and I emailed it to you that way. And your question was, have I sent, ever done a story any stranger way than that? And I can think of two examples. 
Okay. That that would be a little bit stranger even than that than doing it on your phone. Um, because it is 2020 and we can do everything on our on our phone. Wins over there checking, you know, where we're wrong right now on this one. So, <laughs> um, so uh, once in the olden days, or early days at the trip, I've been here 22 years now. Um, I do remember. I think I had gone up to Dallas to um, to do a story on Brian Skinner. Uh, mm -hmm. who was in the NBA and, mm -hmm. and played at Baylor. And um, and he was with the Clippers at the time, and the Clippers were playing the Mavericks. And it was also a chance to go cover an NBA game. And so I was going to not only do a story on Brian Skinner a few days down the road, I, I was doing a like game, game story, story. on yeah. the Mavericks and Clippers. And um, for whatever reason... I, I, I can't remember the exact circumstances, but I guess I didn't send from... Maybe I thought I could make it back. Maybe the game was early enough or something. But then I realized on my way back that, no, I needed to send this. And so I dictated a story to Ned Pedersen via a payphone at a gas no, station. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was one. And dictating is just, you know, it's it's tedious. It's not fun. No, it's not fun. It's the sports writer's version of going to the dentist. Right. Yeah. But then the other one that's probably weirder because you said I have I've done that. I bet you haven't done this. <laughs> and I, I have to give myself props for this because it was extremely creative. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, covered a game somewhere. I don't remember where and encountered internet issues or something or maybe it was security issues where i couldn't get into my email I it was a firewall yeah yeah and no matter what i tried i couldn't get into an email system to not gmail not yahoo not whatever not our trib email in order to send this story along okay and so what i did was I got I did manage to get onto my uh, oh, fantasy yeah, yeah. football website and went on to the message board of that website and pasted the story there and then I called Ned Pedersen at the office and, and gave said, him your sign in yeah yeah and said here's the address here's my sign in my password and all that and he went on to the our message board and and uh and my guys in my league were like, what? What the heck is all this? <laughs> Crawford volleyball? You know, what are you talking about? This doesn't go with fantasy football. But, yeah, so, uh, I don't. like I said, I don't actually remember if it was Crawford volleyball or what it was. But I remember that story. I was about to say, is it, was this the one from the message board? Yeah, yeah. I sent a story via fantasy football message board. You know, back, back before Wi-Fi was prevalent, you had to find an analog phone line. Mm. a lot of the time mm -hmm. and that led me to send stories from a stranger's house oh, yeah. I was supposed to send from my sister's house I've sent from the hotel parking lot mm -hmm. I think every sports writer alive has sent from uh, McDonald's, McDonald's or Starbucks yeah but also I've sent Panera from a blockbuster video oh my gosh <laughs> wow and the coach's house in Spring Lake Earth I've, I've said from coaches, we've all said from coaches' offices. Mm -hmm. This know. is the coach's house. That's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, in Coach's Earth. house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, it, it honestly was kind of fun to, to go through that as you asked that question because, um, like I said, for journalism dorks like us, it's kind of fun to talk well, about. Well, you know, we were just talking before the podcast started about they're doing a docu-series on the strong greyhounds and six-man football that's going to be on CBS All Access. What they need is they need a reality series about, you know, stringers, about guys that are out there covering ball games, covering high school games. and, and Yeah, maybe that's a story encounter. we should do. Yeah. yeah. Behind the, the scenes with Mark <laughs> Strickland. The, the stringer. <laughs> the stringer. Now, if, if if we get if we get a deal to produce the stringer, we're not we're not sending Art Strickland to do it. I'm quitting and going back to stringing, and and, I, and I'm going to be the subject of it. Oh, I got you. You got to be the star. I, I think we better stop there. <laughs> we're off.
the rails, buddy. <laughs>